Hey everyone, Jonathan here from Wild Cockatiel Games, Unity Game Programming for Beginners, and welcome back to the Make a Snake Clone series to what will arguably be the hardest video in this series. So let's jump right into it. Number one, uh, well, what we're going to do in this video is make the snake tail and make it follow the snake head. Now, number one, I just want to do a quick quality of life change. Uh, this food piece is actually a little too big for my liking. So what I'm going to do is resize this. So I'm going to scale it down to about half size, 0 0.5 in the X and Y. Yeah, that's better. And then I'm just going to click apply. So that saves the prefab. So when we reuse this object, it will just drop in at 0 0.5. Next, we're going to add a new script to the food and just call it uh, food. And once that script is created, <clears throat> I'm going to drag and drop it into the scripts folder open it up and we are just going to do something very quick here and uh, basically we are going to make it be destroyed whenever uh, it, it, it has the snake head connect with it so we're just going to write here void on trigger enter 2d and we're going to take in a collider 2d or trigger And we're just going to type destroy game object and semicolon. And basically, that's going to make it so that whenever this snake head uh, hits the food object, the food is just going to disappear at the same time. So it doesn't look weird with the snake head going over it. And for testing, because we're going to be obviously making more tail pieces, I'm going to drag a few more of these food objects into the scene in random places. Not how it will be in the final game, of course, but this is just for testing purposes. So that is good enough. So next, we're going to open up the uh, head script and take a look at where we left off last time. <clears throat> so before, we had spawned a tail. Now what we want to do is make this tail uh, start to actually follow behind uh, the snake head. And doing this is going to be a bit interesting. So how we're going to start it off is we're first going to just keep our scene tidy. And we're going to say new tail dot transform dot parent and we're going to parent this to a game object uh, but we actually have to create that game object first so in the inspector what we're going to do is just go game object create empty and create a new object reset its position and call this uh, tail holder and now what we're going to do is type new tail dot transform dot parent equals game object dot find and we're going to find a reference to this tail holder and you're going to type open parentheses open quotation mark tail holder close parentheses and semicolon now an important note whatever you type here in the quotation marks has to spell exactly as it is spelled here in the unity inspector or else it will not work so make sure that it's case sensitive if you have spaces in there that uh, you have cases as well um, it's, it's not going to equal uh, game object at find tail though it's going to equal that dot transform and basically what this is going to do is it's just going to keep our scene tidy and when we run this through if we run into here the new game object is going to spawn as a child of the tail holder game object oh and if you're wondering there's a uh, why that the other food objects are not disappearing it's because i forgot to save the prefab so if you don't save the prefab the script won't apply to the other objects but if i just click apply i check these others now they have that food script on it and they should all delete okay so what we're going to do now is think about how we can move this tail behind the snake head uh so just to drag a, f a couple tails into the scene i uh, it's gonna whoops. It's gonna seem fairly likely that the obvious way of moving a tail is to move uh, it by following the snake head. So therefore, if the snake moves over here, tail piece one follows behind it, and tail piece two follows behind that. Now that is possible to do. However, that's a complicated bit of coding. What would be a little easier to do is if we have our snake head move over here, we simply take the last tail piece and move it to where the, the head used to be. 
Then we move the head forward a bit more, and we move the last tail piece to where it used to be. We move the, the head up, and we move the last tail piece to where it used to be. This is why we also have the snake head jumping like this, so we can very easily match up locations. And this is the strategy we're going to do for adding the tail into place. So the first thing, geez, I keep stretching it. I don't want to stretch it. So the first thing we're going to do is go into our code here, and we're going to have to get a reference to where the head used to be. So every time we basically move, we're going to need to know where it last was. So to do that, we can just store that position in a variable. So we're going to type vector3. I can hear footsteps pounding on the ceiling above me from the unit upstairs. Very distracting. We're going to type vector3 last pause equals transform dot position. And that's just going to save the snakehead's position into a vector3 variable before it moves. Now the snakehead moves, and after it moves, we want that tail piece to move into that position. Okay, but for that, how do we know what the tail piece is? Well, we created the game object here, the new tail. Uh, so what we're going to need to do is get references to this tail piece outside of just this new tail. So for that, what we can do is we can create a list. And we're going to type up here, actually we're going to make it a private list, private trans, uh, sorry, private list transform, because we want to get a reference to the tail's positions. And then we're going to give the list a name, tail pause, it's, well, we'll call it tail positions, and we're going to type semicolon. Now a list is just what it sounds like. It's a list, we can add things to it, we can give references, and the way we're going to do this is uh, once we create this tail, we're going to say tail positions dot add, and then we're going to type open parentheses, and we're going to type new tail dot transform. And that is just going to add that tail to a list here. And actually, let's just make this public so you can see what I mean, what, I, what we're doing. And these references are going to be stored in the snake head. So if we look under the script, we're going to see this list opens here on the inspector tail positions, size of zero. And as soon as we collect a food piece, uh, that tail is automatically going to be added to this list. And then we collect another tail piece, and it's added to that list and then the third one is added to that list. So now what we're going to do is go back to our move function and start doing something with this. So let's just start with assuming that we only have one tail piece and then we can make it, uh, we can add to it from there and increase the difficulty. So basically what we want to do is we want to say the last tail piece is going to move into the former position of the head. So we can say <coughs> tail positions dot. So, okay, so here's immediately an issue that we're going to run into. In order to get full value of a list, we're going to need to go up here and add a new using statement. And this is going to give us extra commands we can use. And in this case, we're going to need to type uh, using system dot link l i n q and type semicolon now if we do tail positions dot last we're going to get some extra commands so to continue this we're going to type open parentheses close parentheses now we're going to type dot position and we are going to make that equal to last pause so basically we're taking the last tail piece in this list and we're transforming its position into the position that the uh, snake head just moved to. So let's test this out and see what happens. So we're already getting an error and well we can actually quite quickly see that this sort of works. Uh, now we are we're getting an error here and the reason for that is because it was trying to add a tail piece into the last position before a tail piece existed. So we can take and we can control that in a second. But for now, let's just get another piece and see what happens. 
and it doesn't work with more than one piece but that's okay because we didn't code it for more than one piece yet so that's what we're going to take care of next but for this first thing here we only want this to actually take effect if a tail exists so what we can just do here is we can say if tail positions dot count is greater to greater than or equal to one then do this stuff okay so now we need to take into consideration what's going to happen if there is more than one tail piece so basically what we can do is we can say tail positions dot insert and you can see that it gives us some idea of what we want to be adding here so insert, just like a keyboard thing, is where you want to insert something into a list. So we want to insert at position zero the last tail piece. So whoops, tail positions dot last. And for that, we just need to do open close parentheses and another close parentheses to finish that up. And then because this is not going to just reposition that this is going to add an additional item we need to do tail positions dot remove at and now we want to say tail dot count oops tail positions dot count minus one so just to go over this we already know what this first line here does we're just re repositioning that last tail piece but then this, these other two commands are related to the list. So at we are basically reorganizing the list on the go here. We're inserting the last tail piece into the start of the list. And then over here, we are simply removing the very last item in the list. Dot count means the total value of the list. So if our uh, list value is, uh, if there's three tail pieces, we're looking at that last piece and then minus one why the minus one well it's just the way unity works here if we have a list of uh, three then item one is actually referred to as zero item two is referred to as one and so forth so there we have it that's actually working pretty well already uh, the tail is following behind obviously the items are a little scrunched up together but that's something that we can deal with uh, right now, the important thing is the tail is following behind just the way it should in a proper snake game. I think that's long enough for this lesson. I don't want things to get too confusing, so I am going to cut it off there. But if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.